The government of Guatemala said Honduras did not comply with the commitments made to prevent migrants from entering Guatemala. On Tuesday, Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte hopes to prevent a confidence vote from the Italian Senate. Iran's military kickoff for ground forces drill along the coast of the Gulf of Oman. Hello, from the headquarters of Telesuri English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm Gladys Casada. On Monday, the government of Guatemala stated that Honduras did not comply with the commitments made to prevent migrants from that country from entering its territory. Guatemala's Foreign Minister Pedro Brolo made the accusation accusing Honduras citizens of having entered the country in a violent manner, a situation that, according to the diplomat, contradicts the agreement made with Honduras. He ratified that Tegucigalpa should dissuade and control the migratory flow, respecting the human rights of its citizens. He also said they did not comply with the health protocols since 20 people tested positive for the coronavirus. Finally, Brolo ratified that together with Mexico and the United States, they will cooperate with the Honduran crisis. So far, 2,883 participants of the migrant caravan have been deported. And in the wake of the violent attack against the migrant caravan, several human rights organizations in Honduras condemned the version of the authorities in that country, according to which organized crime was behind the massive exodus. For the activists, the criminalization by the Honduran government of its citizens who are forced to emigrate legitimized the repression by the security forces of the so-called safe third countries. Ivani Platero reminded them that men, children and women, many of them pregnant, are not criminals, and that it is the criminals who force them to flee their country. The activists reported that there are 12 citizens detained in Guatemala and 25 have tested positive for COVID-19, many of them children. Guatemala, as a safe third country, is obligated to preserve the rights of the migrants, so human rights organizations demand that the right to asylum, the integrity and dignity of migrants to be respected. COVID-19 continues to spread in Colombia, leaving to date more than 49,000 fatalities and almost 2 million infections. The precautionary measures that Colombia has adopted to date have not served to prevent the spread of the disease. Official records of the health system report that this Monday, 373 people died, reaching a total of 49,004 fatalities. After 10 months of having registered the first case in the South American country, the total of infections amounts to 1,923,132, adding up to the 14,719 infections tally for Monday. Bogota, Antioquia and this valley of Cauca continue to be the main infections epicenters in the country. In Chile, the Mapuche communities of Tecumucuy in the province of Mayeco begin this Tuesday an urgent conversation to coordinate actions and decide how to confront the repression that has been announced by the government of Sebastián Piñera after the murder of police officer during a violent police operation last January 7th in that locality. Several such organizations, as well as members and leaders from various indigenous territories, will attend the meeting, also known as Left Dragoon in the Mapuche language. The urgent action will denounce the gendarmerie incursions, which seeks to provoke the members of the Temukukui community. Let's remember that on January 7th, a police contingent violently entered the territory of the Walmapu after the guilty verdict was handed down against various agents of the law implicated in the murder of Camilo Catrillanca, which has been considered by human rights defenders and social organizations as an act of repression against the Mapuche community. And we'll go now to a short break. Follow us in Twitter at Telesur English and Gladys Telesur.
Who's moving the chess man? What interests and motivate the actors behind each event? What's at stake? Critical Move investigates every event from Monday to Friday. Only on Telesur. Una travesía para descubrirnos. Buscamos conexiones perdidas. No nos queda otra que luchar, porque no tenemos nada que perder. Realmente es por todos. Recorremos el mundo con Reportajes Telesur. Saturdays. Only on Telesur. Huele a para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. To keep myself healthy, I study. Ya nadie te hizo y es teléfono asustado. Para mantenerme saludable, yo bailo. Para mantenerme saludable, yo purifico mi espíritu a través del cuerpo. Y tú. Guide your body. Choose this. Only on the sword. Welcome back. In the eve of Joe Biden's inauguration, we now receive our collaborator, Jorge Gestoso, who will offer more details regarding the current situation of that country. Welcome back. Thank you, Gladys. It's just uh, over 24 hours for Joe Biden to become the 46th president of the U.S. He's saying goodbye to his people in his Wilmington, Delaware city. He's coming to Washington. And then, and the rest of the day, he's going to attend a ceremony at the Lincoln Memorial uh, as an honoring uh, COVID-19 victims. Also, he's planning to have uh, attendance to church tomorrow morning, and he's inviting the leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, and also other Republicans' leader as a gesture of trying to unify the country. They have said yes, and uh, he has been working for weeks in his speech, what is going to be his inaugurating um, speech, mostly focus on unity. That's exactly his uh, most uh, concern. The country is uh, polarized as has never been before because of the of the incendiary uh, rhetoric of. Uh, toughly against uh, COVID, we're talking about 400,000 people, almost 400,000 people being uh, dead because of COVID in the U.S., something that is absolutely uh, horrendous in terms of figures, and there's a lot of problems with logistics on how get people vaccinated. On the other hand, uh, President Trump still in hiding because there's uh, one week now that he has not been seen and talking to the press, he has taped his farewell message that is supposed to uh, be uh, communicated in the next uh, hours, and also it's uh, expected to announce around 100 pardons uh, that includes uh, white-collar uh, criminals and another type of uh, uh, buddies, his friends, uh, while in the city. There is still the concern about the possibility of violence, the possibility that another incident like uh, like the one of January 6 could be repeated, very, very unlikely because they have already uh, uh, members of the National Guard in order to protect the perimeter. They finally, uh, Trump managed to get a wall, but not the wall that he wanted with Mexico. It was a, a wall 
against uh, extremists and terrorists that he has already exacerbated with his uh, incendiary speech. This is really uh, an irony of the end of his uh, presidency, a president that he is ending with the lowest levels of approval ever being recorded. We're talking about 29% of approval, according to the Pew, uh, Pew Research, and definitely he's not leaving town uh, with honors, if not quite the contrary. We'll get back to you, Gladys. Yes, so we thank our collaborator, Jorge Gestoso, for these latest details, and we continue this news brief. The U.S. President-elect Joe Biden has moved to dismiss a new White House decree on COVID travel rules as Donald Trump enters his final full day in office. The U.S. imposed travel restrictions on Europe last March and the Brazilian entry ban was put in place in May, but the White House decreed on Monday that the entry ban will end on 26 January. Just minutes after the announcement, Biden's spokesperson, Jem Psaki, said on Twitter, on the advice of our medical team, the administration does not intend to lift these restrictions on January 26. She said that with more contagious variants emerging around the world, this is not the time to be lifting restrictions on international travel. Joe Biden will take office at around midday on Wednesday, although much of the spotlight is on Trump's final moves, including presidential pardons. Security is intense in Washington, D.C., ahead of the inauguration ceremony. Thousands of National Guard Reserve soldiers have been deployed in the wake of the storming of the Capitol building by a pro-Trump mob on January 6 that left five people dead. And hours before the sworn-in ceremony of President-elect Joe Biden, U.S. First Lady Melania Trump said farewell to her role yesterday as she thanked Americans for what she called the greatest honor of her life. She also asked every American to focus on unity and to always choose love over hatred, peace over violence. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as First Lady of the United States. I have been inspired by incredible Americans across our country who lift up our communities through their kindness and courage, goodness and grace. The past four years have been unforgettable. As Donald and I conclude our time in the White House, I think of all of the people I have taken home in my heart, my fellow Americans. And the Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte was hoping to prevent a confidence vote from the Italian Senate on Tuesday as he struggled to save his coalition government. Numbers are important, and today they are particularly important. But even more important is the quality of the political project, and we, we ask all the political forces to help us relaunch with the maximum speed and help us repair the damage to citizens' trust that the crisis has produced. If the parliament will give its confidence to the government, I guarantee to all of you and to all citizens that we will not only continue to use all our physical and intellectual energy to carry out our duty, but we will also add, as always, our hearts. And we stay in Italy, where explosions from Mount Etna, Europe's largest active volcano, sent lava rocks flying into the air overnight Monday and left orange streams oozing down the slopes. The lava flowed into an inhabited valley while some ash blew over some of the nearby towns. There were no risks for the local population. The volcano continued to be active on Tuesday. Etna is the largest of Italy's three active volcanoes, which also includes Stromboli on the Sicilian island of the same name and Mount Vesuvius near Naples, which last erupted in 1944. As Spain traveled with COVID-19 surge in 19 cases, a new Madrid hospital seen by many as extravagant endeavor when it opened in December is given a fresh chance to prove its utility. With the spiraling surge of contagion was again placing Spain's public health system against the ropes, staff at the Nurse Isabel Sendal Hospital, a project deemed by some as a vanity enterprise, is now tending to several hundred patients. On Monday, 392 COVID-19 patients were being treated more than in any other hospital in Madrid region. 
The nurse Isabel Sendal Hospital is named after the 19th century Spanish nurse who took smallpox vaccination across the Atlantic Ocean. The facility was built in 100 days at a cost of 130 million euros, more than twice the original budget. This is a hospital that is prepared to give all the COVID treatment. It is a monographic hospital. Its specific task is to deal with this pathology, this pandemic and the consequences of the pandemic. All I say is be very careful. Everyone in my family got it, but they got it easy, asymptomatic. But I, in all truthfulness, I didn't expect this to be so tough. What we have realized with COVID is that support of the intermediate ward is fundamental for the intensive care ward. If we can admit patients to this ward early, we can avoid 60% of patients being put on a ventilator. UK Health Secretary Matt Hancock said he is self-isolating after being pinched by the NHA's coronavirus app. Hancock posted video to his Twitter account on Tuesday saying he will not be leaving his home until Sunday. The health secretary urged everyone to follow the rules. Hancock fronted a Downing Street briefing on COVID-19 on Monday afternoon. In March last year, the health secretary revealed he tested positive for coronavirus just hours after Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced he too had tested positive. Last night I was pinged by the NHS coronavirus app, so that means I'll be self-isolating at home, not leaving the house at all until Sunday. And this self-isolation is perhaps the most important part of all the social distancing, because I know from the app that I've been in close contact with somebody who's tested positive, and this is how we break the chains of transmission. So you must follow these rules uh, like I'm going to. Uh, I got to uh, work from home for the next six days and together by doing this, by following this and all the other power play rules that we've had to put in place, we can get through this and beat this And virus. we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. To keep myself healthy, I study. Ya nadie te hizo yes, tres por Para mantenerme saludable, yo bailo. Para mantenerme saludable, yo purifico mi espíritu a través del cuerpo. Y tú. Guide your body. Use this only on the sword. A review of the world news that investigates, insights, analysis, and induces criticism because every event has a context. Pusimos el punto de. Dot in the eye. Saturday, only on the sword. Welcome back. Iran's military kicked off a ground forces drill on Tuesday along the coast of the Gulf of Oman. The drill is the latest in a series of exercises that the country is holding amid escalating tensions over its nuclear program and Washington's pressure campaign against Iran. Commander units and airborne infantry are participating in the annual exercise along the fighter jets, helicopters and military transport aircraft. Iran's National Army Chief Abdul Rahim Musavi oversees the drill. 
Tensions between Washington and Tehran have increased amid a series of incidents stemming from Trump's unilateral withdrawal from Iran's nuclear deal with world powers. When the U.S. then stepped up economic sanctions, Iran gradually abandoned the limits that the deal had imposed on its nuclear development. The general goal of this drill is to assess the offensive and penetrative power of the ground forces against the enemy from air, ground and sea. And Malawi has transformed the Bingen National Stadium in the capital Lilongwe into a COVID-19 field hospital. The government has imposed its first lockdown as amid the rising number of infections with 13,027 confirmed cases and 321 official fatalities. Judges rule... Situation now, the situation is becoming worse because we have seen a, an increase in the number of patients said in the in the wards as well as the, in in our clinics so like hospital it will give a relief to the way we have been handling the patients because now what we will be doing those that, that are severely sick they'll be coming here those that are a little bit is, is stay, is stable but they will they are, they are need of admission, they will be go, going to, to Bingo National State. On Monday, Morocco's health ministry confirmed the presence of the COVID-19 variant it discovered in the UK. According to health authorities, the variant was detected in the northern port of Tangier in a Moroccan national returning from Ireland via Marseille. Morocco has announced plans to launch a free vaccination campaign targeting 25 million people, which comprehends 80% of its population, using AstraZeneca and China's Sinopharm shot. On 23 December, Morocco imposed a nationwide four-week curfew from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. to contain the virus. Health experts have raised concerns over the new highly transmissible mutations of the virus, first reported in the UK and South Africa, and now spreading in several other countries. Chinese authorities on Tuesday deployed additional medical experts to aid rescue attempts for at least 12 miners who have been trapped underground in a collapsed gold mine for more than a week. Local officials said rescuers are in telephone contact with 12 of the 22 workers underground who are in good health, but the fate of the other 10 remain unknown. Hundreds of rescuers were drilling six shafts in an attempt to reach the different parts of the mine, as well as seeking to clear debris left on an explosion on January 10th. Workers passed a note to the surface on Monday saying they were suffering from toxic fumes and rising water levels. Mine managers have been detained for waiting more than 24 hours before reporting the accident. On Tuesday, multiple car accidents were reported on expressway during heavy snowfall in Miyagi, Japan. Local media show footage of a vehicle pileup involving 130 vehicles, which occur around noon local time. According to local authorities, one person died in the accident. Japan saw heavy snow recently around the coast area in central Japan, as some places see record amounts of snowfall due to the winter pressure distribution and low pressure. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.